This video is going to be a review how to solve by factoring. There are many, many, many ways to factor. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the Xbox method. And there is another video that will be on the slide and divide method. If you want to learn other methods, there's tons of them out there. Google it. You can find some more. These are the two that we've been teaching in class. So these are the two that we're going to focus on for our video purposes. All right. So the first thing, no matter what method you're wanting to do, is you want to make sure that this is in standard form. And by standard form, I mean your x squared term needs to be first, your x term needs to be second, and your numbers need to be at the end. So this one is already in standard form for us, but you want to just double check that before you start. The second question we want to ask is, is there a GCF? Is there a number that can go into 3, negative 15, and positive 18. Well, 3 can go into all of those. So I'm going to divide everything by 3 and pull it outside of the parentheses. So 3x squared divided by 3 leaves me with x squared. Negative 15x divided by 3 leaves me with negative 5x. And 18 divided by 3 leaves me with 6. So all I did was divide everything by 3. I now have this 3 outside of the parentheses. F finding the GCF makes it so much easier to factor because now I only need to factor this portion, which is much smaller, easier numbers to deal with. So if you can ever take out a GCF, be sure and do that first. All right, now we are ready to throw this into the Xbox and find the factors. So to use the Xbox, you first need to multiply the A times the C. The A times the C is what we are trying to find two numbers that will multiply up to it. So 1 times 6 is 6. So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 6 and add to the B which in this problem is negative 5. So I'm going to brainstorm what multiplies up to 6. Well, I've got 1 times 6. I've got 2 times 3. I've got negative 1 times negative 6. And negative 2 times negative 3. So that's everything that multiplies to 6. Now I want to see which of those pairs is going to add to negative 5. Well, the only one that works is negative 2 and negative 3 adds to negative 5. So those two numbers are what are going to come over into my box. I'm ready to do my box. Your first term is always going to go into the first box. So x squared is my first term going in the first box. My last term goes in the last box. And my other two numbers, negative 2x, and negative 3x are going to go into my other two boxes. It does not matter which corner you put those two in. You can switch them around. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're going to start up in the top. What times what gives me x squared? Well, that can only be x times x. Then I ask x times what gives me negative 3x? Negative 3. So x times negative 3 is negative 3x x times what gives me negative 2x? That's negative 2. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Then I multiply for the last box, negative 3 times negative 2, does that give me 6? And it checks out. It, come, it works out. So I have found my factors. My factors are, I'm going to bring this 3 over that I started with. In my two parentheses, I just found x minus 3 is 1. And x minus 2 is the other one. So on the test, when it asks you for the factors, this is your factors. Or you could say it's your factored equation. These are your factors. But this problem asks us to find the roots. So we do have one step farther to go to find the roots. But it's one easy step. You can take both of your parentheses set them equal to 0, and you will find your roots. So in this case, I could solve by x by adding 3 to both sides. And my first root is 3. My second root can be found by setting x minus 2 from up here. 
equal to zero. Add two to both sides. And my second root is two. So that is how I would solve by factoring.